Golden Dog, Kero um, In 2005, the Norwegian government made the High North a main foreign policy priority. The government before it had already intensified its High North diplomacy, commissioned reports and issued a white paper on opportunities and challenges in the High North. Public awareness about developments in the northern regions was growing every day. The High North soon became a hot topic in Norway, and the debate was centered in a, around economic opportunities alongside the challenges related to climate change and environmental consequences of increased economic activity. Relations with Russia were also part of the picture, as it has always been and will always be for Norway. It was important to keep good relations with Russia and at the same time make sure that Norway's allies had up-to-date information and knowledge about developments in the region. The High North diplomacy was to serve these purposes. Against this backdrop, I started on a PhD study, a PhD in international relations, and I chose to specialize on the Arctic. It became clear to me pretty soon though that what was important in Norway at the time hardly registered on the radar in places like Washington DC and Brussels. When I asked policymakers abroad, this was in 2005-06, when I asked them to describe their perceptions of developments in the High North and the Arctic, they looked surprised and they asked, the High North? Um, do you mean the North Pole? I realized pretty quickly that I had to rephrase my research question, but I will not bother you with, uh, with details about that. The point I want to make is that in the mid-2000s, there was little broad interest and knowledge about Arctic affairs in states in the Arctic and bordering the Arctic. Today, the picture is an entirely different one. For instance, we just heard a representative of the Chinese government talk about international collaboration in the Arctic, and this conference is one of many evidences that something has definitely changed in terms of international attention to the region. There are many reasons for this, and geopolitics has played a certain role in it. When the international attention to the Arctic skyrocketed in 2007 and 8, expectations of, of an emerging race for the Arctic or a rush to the North Pole played an important role. Some analysts were talking about a militarization of the region, others underlined the unique collaborative climate among Arctic states. Given the scarce systematic knowledge about actors and interests in the region, we saw an opportunity to develop an international research program that was to go beyond the media headlines and into the details of the drivers for various states' Arctic policy making. What were the motivations and interests, and what could we derive from this in terms of potential for cooperation and conflict in the Arctic? The research program was named Geopolitics in the High North. It was led by the Norwegian Institute for Defense Studies with a range of Norwegian and international uh, partners. And it was funded by the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs through the Research Council of Norway. In the program, we studied in depth the Arctic policy development in the United States, the European Union, Russia, and Norway. The name geopolitics in the high north reflected an expectation that the strategic interests in the region were rising. And based on this, we engaged in the academic debate about whether we were likely to see continued collaboration in the Arctic or whether the region stood on the brink of conflict. I'll not speak for all the researchers in the program, but I wanted to direct your attention towards one particular book that was recent, uh, recently published. Uh, the book is called Geopolitics and Security in the Arctic, Regional Dynamics in a Global World. In order to take us one step further regarding the question of whether we're likely to continue to see stability in the Arctic or whether we should expect interstate relations to be more challenging in the future, in this book we ask, what are the factors that contribute to stability and what are the factors that may, mo may move developments in the opposite direction? We found that one major stabilizing factor is common interests. Arctic coastal states have fundamental common interests, for example, in the workings of UNCLOS. UNCLOS gives the Arctic coastal states special rights and responsibilities to huge, resource-rich and fragile marine areas and to continental shelves. This is true not least for Russia, and it is, as we see it, the most important stabilizing factor. Then, we argue, Arctic developments cannot be seen in isolation from global developments or developments in other parts of the world. Hence the subtitle of the book, Regional Developments in a Global World. 
Developments in international relations may impact collaboration in the Arctic. We wrote the book before the Ukraine crisis, so the point is general. But current developments in Russia-West relations are a complicating factor for in interstate relations also in the Arctic. For sure, so far, the Ukraine crisis has not had severe impact on Arctic collaboration, except for uh, the defense domain. The question is, of course, whether Arctic states will be able to isolate Arctic affairs from broader interstate relations. For example, Russia is increasing its military presence in the Arctic. In principle, this is nothing to be alarmed about. The Arctic is of strategic importance to Russia, and considering Russia's ambitions to return as a great power in the international scene, increased military Russian presence in the Arctic is to be expected. However, the poorer Russia-West relations are, the harder it will be for other Arctic states to relate pragmatically to such a change in Russian military posture. And this, of course, goes, goes both ways. We do not know what the future will bring. What we do know is that we need continued and updated systematic research on various states in the Arctic and their interests and policies in order to be able to understand international relations in the region, whether it has to do with geopolitics or not. As a continuation of the geopolitics in the High North program, IFS, together with the Fritjof Nansen Institute, um, have uh, initiated a new research program which examine Asian states and their interests in the Arctic. It includes international partners in Asian countries as well. If you would like to hear more about the book on geopolitics and security in the Arctic, you're very welcome to join us for our, uh, our breakout session at 6 p.m. It's in the visa room on the first level of this building. We're also fortunate to have uh, the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs represented at this session with Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Bodglad Pedersen, who will give his perspectives on Arctic developments. And last but not least, Iceland's own Valur Ingemundarsson, a world-leading Arctic scholar, will contribute with his views on Arctic geopolitics and regional developments. Thank you for your attention. Tack för att lusta.